In our last tutorial, we saw how to carry out the basic routing and the rules we have to follow. We also saw how to check the DRCs of the board for the various rules that have been set. Once all of the DRCs are cleared, we can proceed to manufacture our board. We will now go through the steps we require to do so. Firstly, as mentioned in our last tutorial, all the ref text should be properly placed. They should not overlap with the pads. Also, the ref text in the assembly layer should not overlap with the silkscreen layer. There are two ref texts. One is the silkscreen layer and one is the assembly layer and both overlap with one another. The next step is to generate the Gerber files. But before generating Gerbers, you should ensure that the PCB design concerning the schematic and the layout is perfect. For that, we need to generate a checklist to see if we are meeting the design requirements. There are three types of checklists, including the BOM or Bill of Material, Schematic, and Layout. We need to confirm whether the BOM we have created corresponds to the schematic before we send it for manufacturing. This means confirming if the component values are matching and whether the footprints are matching as per the manufacturing part number. Then you have a schematic value. Also, there are polarity checks for diodes, LEDs, and so on. We need to check whether the polarity markings are correct in the circuit. Next, we need to carry out the layout checking. For example, you can see a fiducial over here. Fiducials are required for a component alignment during manufacturing. Although typically, we don't use fiducials and schematics. They are just placed on your board and don't have any net connections. Sometimes you may even forget to place those fiducials. Therefore, it is a good practice to write down the requirements needed for manufacturing as per your design requirements. This will help in minimizing mistakes. When we are generating Gerbers, we also need to check whether we have mentioned different details about the board. In the right bottom corner, you can see that we have mentioned the title, name of the board, company name, and the PCB designer's name. Right now, we don't have a part number, but you might have to mention part numbers if required. There is also the revision and the date. On the top left corner, go to File and select Page Settings, and the Page Settings window will pop up. As you can see, you can enter the various details required, such as title, company name, and comment section for fields that you create and fill. What we type in this window will be seen in the title block of the board file. Over here, we have typed the company name and other details. Next, click OK. For our schematics under file, there's a page setting option to enter the required details. Once we have completed layout, we will need to place your company name, the board name, or the logo of your company, and also the part number of the board. Currently, we haven't assigned a part number for this board. To place the board name, go to the right bottom corner of the screen and select Add Text on the Copper Layers, denoted by T. Then select Silkscreen Layer as it will be printed on the board. The text you type on the board with the Silkscreen Layer will be printed on the actual PCB. Select the Silkscreen Layer and click on the board as shown. Add whatever text is needed in the Text Properties dialog box. After that, select the size of your text. You can see that we have mentioned Sierra Circuits and Demo Design and have also used our company logo. To place the logo, we will require a DXF file. If you don't have a logo, you can design one yourself. If you have an existing logo as an image file, you can easily find software online that enables one to convert it into a DXF format for use. To import a DXF file, go to File. Next, go to Import, and under Import, select Import Graphics. You can now browse wherever your DXF file is. There are different DXF files, like the ones seen here. Select the Sierra Circuits logo and click Open. Once you import the logo, click OK on Import Graphics file. The logo is currently too large for the board and has to be scaled down. Go to File, then to Import, and again to Import Graphics. You can change the logo scale by entering a small scale value of 0.05 on the Import Scale field under Import Parameters and adjust the scale of the logo. You can now see that the size of the logo has reduced. In this way, we can select a suitable logo size for your board and place it on the board as we have here. After doing this, we need to mark the dimensions of the board. Next, we need to mark the dimensions from one mounting hole to another. We have used four mounting holes, which you can see over here. We need to mark the dimensions in X and Y direction from one mounting hole to another. 
we will also need to mark the dimensions from the mounting hole to the board edge, as you can see between here and here. To mark the dimension, select the Add Dimension button on the toolbar. Next, select the Fab Layer in the Layers Manager. As we move to the center of the mounting hole, you'll see a white circle appear around the center of the hole. You should now click on that, and then click on the mounting hole on the other side and pull the dimension down and place it like this. You need to mark the dimensions in the fab layer in this manner. Now, once the dimensions are marked, your board is almost completed. Check if the orientation of your connectors is as per the data sheet. Next, we need to go to the fab layer. The fab details are the design requirements for manufacturing that you are mentioning on the fabrication notes or the fab notes. To the right of the board, you can see there is a stack up drawing. This is our board stack up. This is the required copper plating along the thickness of each layer. We can see the top solder mask, its thickness, the bottom solder mask, and its thickness. The total dimensions of your board, the thickness of your board, the tolerance of that board. Over here, it is plus or minus 10%. We get all of this information from the stack up report as we saw in the last video. We need to fill all this information over here in the fab layer again. We have drawn the stack up using the add graphic lines option, and we have placed all the names using the text layer. All the names and drawings should be in the fab layer. Also, there are fab details which you can see on the left hand side of the board. All of the number points you see specify information about the board. The board material selected as per IPC standards is class 2, although for specific requirements, we can also go for class 1 and class 3. Material selection depends upon the application of the board. There is also the board material. We need to specify what material will be used for the board and how many layers make up the board. As you can see, the board has four layers. Coming to the impedance traces on your board, here we have 90 ohm differential traces. We have mentioned that on layer 1 and 4, we have 5 mil trace with 4 mil spacing. 90 ohms for the differential pairs with a plus or minus 10% tolerance. Next, there are pads on the board. Through hole pads, plated through hole pads, and non-plated through hole pads. The pads will have certain tolerances which we need to mention. Normally we go with 3 mils for the plated through hole pads and 2 mils for the non-plated through hole pads. We have specified over here plated through holes will have 3 mil tolerance or 0.003 inches. Then this is the plating of the board after the completion of the board. Post that we need to specify the solder mask color. Here we have specified the solder mask color will be green and the silk screen color will be white. These are the basic points that are conveyed to the manufacturer. We need to mention all these points in our board using the fab layer as well. There's also one more thing we need to mention, which is your drill chart. A drill chart tells you how many holes are used in the board and the different sizes of the holes used, whether they are plated or non-plated. It will also mention the number of vias being used and whether they are through vias, blind vias, or buried vias, along with the tolerances of all the holes. Now click the plot button in the toolbar. Click generate drill files. This will give us the exact dimensions of the holes along with the number of holes present. Once we have completed entering the required information such as dimensions for the board, fab details, stack up details, and design information, we need to generate Gerber files. Once the design is completed, we need to generate all these files as they will serve as inputs for the manufacturing. These are the layers for which you will generate Gerber files. We're using a four layer board and will require etch files for the top, bottom, and middle layers. Then we'll require top and bottom silkscreen, top and bottom paste mask, top and bottom solder mask, top and bottom assembly layer. Next are the fab details, which have been discussed earlier along with the stack of details. Finally, you require a board outline, also known as the edge cut layer. These are the minimum Gerber requirements for any particular board design. Next, we need an NC drill file. An NC drill file gives you information about the holes needed on your board. It will serve as an input to the drill machine to drill the required holes on the board. Let's now get to pick and place files. These files will be used by the machine to identify the locations of various components on your board. In other words, a pick and place file will include the coordinates of various components on your board. Then there's the IPC 356 netlist. Netlist files contain information about the connections between various components. 
Before starting with the generation of Gerbers, ensure that your board netlist matches with your schematic netlist. Once you export the netlist, you need to cross-check and ensure that the netlist connections match your schematic. We will cover how to export the netlist later on. After the netlist, there is the PDF output. We need PDF outputs for top and bottom assembly, fab details, and all layers referring to all four layers of your board. Also, we will require PDF outputs for top and bottom silk screen, board outline in the edge cut layer, the schematic PDF, which includes schematic pages present, along with a stack up report. We will also need outputs for your top and bottom solder mask and top and bottom paste masks. Finally, we want a bomb. It lists all the components which will be used on your board and the manufacturer number or part number which will help manufacturers in identifying the components. Let us start with the generation of Gerbers first. We'll go to our board file again to generate the Gerbers. On the toolbar at the top, select Plot icon. The plot window pops up. In the window, select the Gerber option in plot format. Next, select the output directory or the folder location where you want to save it. We've created this folder over here. Let's select that folder for Gerber files we require. Click Select Folder and then click Yes. Now select the layers for which you want your Gerbers to be created. The layers you need to select are top, ground, power, and bottom. These are the four layers in our PCB. Also select forward paste, bottom paste, forward silk, bottom silk, forward solder mask, and bottom solder mask along with edge cut layer. The edge cut layer is the actual boundary of the PCB. Also select front fab and bottom fab. These are the minimum layers we require for Gerber files. Since we haven't considered the other layers in the PCB, we don't need to generate Gerber files for them. Now click the checkbox for plot footprint references. Since we normally don't plot values of board components, plot footprint values is not that important on your board. Therefore, we'll leave it unchecked. Select exclude PCB as layer from other layers and exclude paths from your silkscreen options. Since we need tented vias, do not select do not tent vias option. Tented vias are vias covered with solder mask. In Gerber options, select Protel file name extensions. Next, click Plot. Once you click Plot, you can see over here that the Gerbers are generated. The next step is to generate a drill file. To do that, click Generate Drill Files. In the window that opens, select the location for the drill files and select Drill Folder. Let's keep the units in inches. We can let the other options remain as default. In case PTH and MPTH in single file is not selected, click and select the same even if it shows not recommended when you hover over the option. Once this is done, click Generate Drill File and the drill file will be generated in your location. Now your drill file and Gerbers are generated. The next step is generating our pick and place file. For generating pick and place files, go to File and select Fabrication Outputs. After that, select Footprint Position File. Now select the folder in which you want to save the footprint position file. We'll select the XY file folder by clicking Select Folder. We'll need to select the units, pick inches, and select single file for board option. All the top and bottom components will be in the single file. And if you select separate files for the front and back, it will generate two different files for top and bottom layers. Next, select ASCII format, which will give you the actual position size. Now click Generate Position File to get the position file. In the same way, you can select the CSV option, which will give you an Excel format for the position file. Now we have generated files in both formats in our chosen folder. The next step is to get our IPC netlist file. Go to File and select File Fabrication Outputs and select IPCB356 netlist file. This will require you to enter the file location. We'll select the netlist folder over here and click Open. Let's use the file name Test2 and click Save. Now your netlist file is created in the chosen folder. The next step is to get our BOM files. For the BOM file, go to File, select Fabrication Outputs, then click BOM file. 
Similar to the netlist file, select the location of your BOM file and save it. The last thing we need is a PDF file. For generating a PDF, go to the plot icon, and here in plot format, select PDF option. In drill marks, select actual size. Select the location in the output directory, then select the PDF folder. Click the checkbox for plot for footprint references. Exclude PCB edge layers from other layers and exclude pads from silkscreen. Select the layers for which you need a PDF. Just as in Gerber file generation, there are four layers you need to select. And then there are layers for forward paste, bottom paste, forward silk, bottom silk, forward mask, and bottom mask. We also need the edge cut layer, which is a PCB outline, along with the forward fab and bottom fab. Once you select all these layers, click plot. Now our PDFs are created in the selected folder. The next thing we require is a PDF of our schematic. For that, you need to open the schematic. To generate a PDF of the schematic, go to plot schematic on top, select the folder location of the schematic, and click select folder. Select schematic size in page size and choose output mode as black and white or color as required. We're selecting black and white here. Next, select PDF option for output format over here and click plot all pages. Now your PDF is created in the selected folder. We'll require a stack up as well. Save the PDF of the required stack up in a folder of your choice. Now we have generated all files required as per the document. We now need to check whether the bomb, which was generated by us, was properly generated before it goes to manufacturing. For that, we can go to the KiCad project file. Select Tools in the main toolbar. Next, select Gerber files. After clicking, you will see the Gerber view screen displayed. We can now see if the Gerbers and the drill files generated were done properly. Go to File and select Open Exelon Drill File. Then browse the location where the drill file was saved and click Open. You can now see all the holes that are on your board as green circles. This gives you the locations of all the holes needed and their dimensions. Now, we will see if the holes generated are present within our board. Go to File and select Open Gerber File. Now select Edge Cut Layer File and click Open. We can see from the board outline that all holes generated are within the board. If needed, you can also check the locations of the holes generated. We can use this measure tool to check various hole locations and see the X, Y coordinates along with the radius of the hole. Hence, we can verify the Gerber files are properly generated. To generate and open the drill map, exit the Exelon drill file you are now in. Go to File and select Fabrication Output. Next, select Drill File. In the window that pops up, select the output folder as Gerber's. Click Generate Map File. Our drill map file is now generated. Go to Map File Format and select Postscript, and also select Gerber. Select the output folder. Next, click Generate Drill File. Our drill file is now generated. Exit the board file and go to Gerber View, with which we were looking at the Gerber files. Go to File, click Open Gerber Files, Select Drill Map File, and click Open. You can now see the drill map. We can check the remaining Gerbers in a similar manner. Go to File again, click Open Gerber File, and select the top copper layer, then click Open. These are the top copper layers which will be printed on the top layer. Similarly, we can see the remaining files. This is the bottom copper layer. In this way, we can check whether the various files for our board are according to our layout. Once this is verified, we can send the files in for manufacturing. To summarize, we have detailed the deliverables required for board manufacturing. You will require the Gerbers, the drill chart of the map, drill file, the placement file, along with the IPC netlist. Send the files as a single zipped compressed file. This will ensure that there are no errors during the transmission of the files.